Hello, my name is Steve Gerhardt, and this is the Unagi Observer. This week's topic is about Shigeru Mizuki's, one of my favorite old school manga artists, character named Kitaro. If you watch his channel, then you already know that Shigeru Mizuki is a favorite artist of mine. You can see other videos about Mizuki in the links down below. Kitaro is one of the many characters he had created during his career. It should also be noted that Kitaro is also his most famous, although many of you probably have never heard of this character before. Before manga books and magazines started, the Japanese had very limited access to entertainment. Television was in its infancy and in post-war Japan, not very affordable. Movies were kind of expensive, so most people read various comics that they had to rent out. That's right, they rented comics. Stores would rent out comics as if they were paid for libraries. There wasn't much in the way of printed comics otherwise, so the practice of kashibon, or rental comics, was prevalent. At the same time as these rental comics, there was still the ever-popular Kami Shibai. This practice started in the late 20s and early 1930s. Practitioners of the Kami Shibai were traveling storytellers. They would commission artists to draw or paint a series of cards that told a story they would make up or base it on folklore. The Kami Shibai would find a street corner or a place in a park and put out a bowl, and once it was filled with enough coins, the Kami Shibai would present a miniature stage and then slide in the first card and began to tell a story, changing the picture cards as the story progressed. This was pretty much how Shigeru Mizuki started out. He would write and draw his own Kashiban stories and hope that his publisher could fund a storefront to rent those comics. To supplement that already meager income, uh, he would also make the story cards for various Kami Shibai. He barely made enough money to feed his family. So one day his publisher, who had just spent some time on a yokai kick, asked Shigeru if he would do a series based on a yokai legend called Hitaro of the Graveyard. So Mizuki did, and it didn't do well. Fortunately for Shigeru, the manga industry took off. He was able to write a few popular manga books and had a decent run in a local manga magazine. There was finally some renewed interest in yokai stories in the early 50s, and Shigeru decided to revamp Kitaro of the Graveyard. Now, before I continue, you're probably wondering what the heck a yokai is. That is going to be the subject of another video for another day, but for this episode, I will try to make it brief. Now, Japan has millions of gods in its various pantheons. The yokai are the more, most numerous and less powerful ones. In some translations, they are minor demons or they are ghosts or spiritual creatures of some kind. Not as powerful as other demons or gods, but the yokai like to screw around with humans a lot. Yokai folklore tends to be gothic, disturbing, and has a lot of dark humor in it. Now, as the manga industry took off and there seemed to be a resurgence in interest in yokai stories, it just so happened that Shigeru Mizuki was a folklore expert on the subject of yokai. So, as manga were taken off at the request of his publisher, Shigeru did Kitaro of the Graveyard again. And it, it did okay this time around. He was able to get a serial out of it, but not much more than that. So he stopped for a little while, and he actually took the time to learn more about the audience that read manga. And then with that knowledge, he retooled his yokai manga and renamed it Gay 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 no Kitaro in the 1960s. It became a hit. Quite simply, Shigeru made yokai stories and characters more kid-friendly. Now there were good yokai who fought bad yokai to protect mankind, they were infused with morbid comedy, and that was the main premise of his new batch of Kitaro stories. As a result, he started doing story arcs like the famous Yokai Wars. Now, you're probably now asking, so, okay, who was Kitaro? Kitaro, the hero, is a powerful yokai with numerous spiritual powers, ranging from detecting and tracking other yokai to surviving dismemberment. Kitaro was born with only one eye. His other was missing, and so he just had an empty eye socket there. As a result, Kitaro would wear his hair over the empty eye. His parents were also yokai, but his father was famous. His father's name was Medama Oyaji and he was famous for his knowledge of other yokai ghosts and monsters. He would also be important to Kitaro. As a very young child, both of Kitaro's parents died of disease. However, his father, who loved Kitaro very, very much, wanted to help Kitaro in his quest to try and bridge the yokai and human worlds together. So Kitaro's father actually came back from the dead as an eyeball with a tiny body. So when his father is not helping Kitaro, he would either be taking a bath in a cup of tea, or reside in Kitaro's empty eye socket. And that is Kitaro in a nutshell. 
Now, while I describe Shigeru as making the series kid-friendly, I should say that it's kid-friendly for Japanese kids. There is still a higher level of gore and the macabre than we would find in American comics. But the formula worked for Shigeru Mizuki. The manga series turned into a wildly popular television anime series in the late 60s, early 70s, and as time would go on, Kitaro would have his own movies, video games, and so on. Yet, even so, today, Kitaro is largely unknown by Western audiences. Being a fan of Shigeru Mizuki's work, I will, of course, encourage you to check out JJG no Kitaro. Now, one of the easiest sound bus manga collections that you can find out there is simply called Kitaro, and it's the one published by Drawn and Quarterly. Check it out, and have a dark laugh or two, and just let me give you one little piece of advice. If a creepy little kid offers you a free ride on what seems to be run-down public transportation, just say no. That is it for this week. If you liked this video, please hit the like button. If you like what I do here, please subscribe. I would like it very much if you did. My name is Steve Gearhart. This is the Unagi Observer. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all next time.